In this video, traders, we're going to talk about reducing your trade drawdown. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so we are under a critical analysis of our trading performance, and I believe this is a very, very, very good way of improving and increasing your bottom line moving forward without doing the normal things like looking for the next best trade, the next strategy, all this kind of stuff. So we're reviewing what we've done before, adjusting it, tweaking it, playing with it so that we can create a new plan, a new method moving forward that's hopefully going to make us more money. Okay, so on this, in this video, I'm talking about reducing your trade drawdown. Now, why would you want to reduce your trade drawdown, you may say? Okay, let's look at an example here. So you are buying this market here for whatever reason that may be. We're not getting into strategies in this video. We're not talking about kind of the, the operations part of it. We're talking about uh, you know, how we can adjust our overall approach to improve our trading. So let's say we buy at this point here. The market goes a little bit lower here. Our stop is, let's say, here. Um, doesn't ping us out, and then off we go. So that's fine. It's a good trade. It's a profitable trade, and we're happy with the trade. It doesn't stop us out. We've got a reasonably good stop placement because the point of a stop is it's wide enough to keep us in the trade, but not too wide that it's going to cause us a lot of loss. However, the problem with that is that you know this. Let's say this gap is um, you know 50, 50 pips or fifty ticks or fifty points, however you want to look at it. And let's say we're going at ten pound a point, or we're doing ten CFDs, or we're doing trading on the spot market, but Whatever we're doing, let's say the risk on that is 500 pounds, okay? So we press the risk 500 pounds, and that could be 50, could be five, could be 5,000, the value doesn't matter. So we now risking 500 pounds, and let's say we're looking to make it 1,500 or 2,000, whatever the case may be. Again, no, no need to get into too much detail about that. But the point is, if we are constantly getting this drawdown, let's say we're, this drawdown here level is you know, 38 points or 40 points, something like that. So it's keeping us in. Why is it important for us to kind of reduce that? Well, the reason is, and if I get another color pen, green will do us. The reason is, guys, is that if we can reduce the drawdown, we can increase our position size because we're all, in the day, you and I are risking X amount per trade. This is generally how most people will approach it. And I think it's, 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 it's kind of the majority of us are doing this because we're comfortable with a specific amount of risk. And let's use this 500 pounds number. Again, could be 50, doesn't matter. 500 pounds number. We want to risk 500 pounds per trade because we've done calculations and said, hey, we're going to do three trades a day if we're day trading or if we're swing trading three trades a month, we're prepared to risk 1500 a month, blah, blah, blah. There's our total risk. We've kind of brought the boundaries in and said 500 pounds per trade. That's fine. And so if we're saying to ourselves, okay, we need a 50 point stop on this, we know we're doing 10 pound a point. However, and that's obviously based on you know how right we are, whether we're you know get get the get the entry right. However, if we can improve that entry, and we can say, hey, you know what, our drawdown is only actually, you know, far less. If we can halve it, halve our average drawdown to say twenty points or twenty pips, however you want to look at it, all of a sudden our stop can be say twenty five points or 30 points. And so we can increase our position size. If it was 25 points, obviously we'll be able to double our position size to 20 pounds a point. And so the resulting profit would be increased dramatically. Obviously it would be doubled if we were just using that. But I mean, I'm simplifying it in a way here, but you can see that if we're constantly getting a lower drawdown, we can bring the stop up. If we can bring the stop up, we can increase the position size, Obvious logic is if we increase position size on our profitable trades, we're going to make more money. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we say to ourselves, you know what, I want to be able to um, reduce my drawdown. So the first thing we do is we look at all our data. We get all our trades out and we say, hey, I want to see what the drawdown is. Now, we should be keeping journals, we should be keeping statistics, we should be keeping stuff like, you know, we've talked about mad, uh, maximum adverse excursion on the trade, that's your max drawdown. Uh, maximal favorable excursion is where, how far the trade goes in your favor. You know, as much data as you can keep, it may seem tedious at the time when you're journaling and you're putting into Excel and stuff, you think, why am I doing this? You're doing this because actually, it, it very simply, it means more money for you at the, at the other end of the, at the other end of the, at the other end of the month, the other end of the year, because you can see that data and you can see it 
actually in raw format and adjust it. So we're looking at our data and we're saying, okay, what's our maximum adverse excursion on all of our trades? And we probably, because we've got that stop level of 50 points already, we probably know that it's maybe 40 or so most of the time. And that's why we've got the stop level. We wouldn't have just plucked it out of thin air generally. And so how do we reduce our trade drawdown? Now, obviously we're gonna have categories of setups that have probably got different stop levels. That 50 point stop might be something that we're looking to catch on a, on a trend turn. Uh, if it's a first pullback, then we're obviously probably not gonna use a 50 point stop. We're gonna use something a little bit different. So we need to put our effort into the stuff that's gonna make the most, most eff effect to the bottom line. Um, this may not be worth doing because perhaps we're pretty good at it. We're quite good at getting that low point there. The stop's obviously gonna be there. We're not gonna do so well at it. But let's say we're using something that's got a bit of a wider stop like that 50 point. How do we reduce the trade drawdown? Well, the first thing to do is get all the trades together with, the, with our larger stop. And we say, okay, let's see what would happen if we were 10 ticks later or 10 ticks lower, 10 ticks higher if we're, if we're going short, 10 ticks uh, lower if we're going long on all those trades. How would that affect the trade? And again, we're using that raw data. We're not theorizing, we're not guessing, we're saying, hey, actually, if I bought, I actually bought at, uh, you know, 501 or whatever that is, I'm just, whatever it is, 1.501, and now, you know, I'm buying at 1.491, 10 ticks lower, how does that affect everything? Actually, that affects everything, and I'm doing that across all the trades, whether that's, whether that's in uh, currencies, whether that's in indices, whatever it may be, the point is, uh, I may have lost out on one trade on that. I may, in other words, I may have missed one trade because it didn't go 10 points lower. It just turned when I hit it. But actually all the others, all the other 10, 20 trades that I did, I would have made um, 10 points more um, because I came out the same exit. And I would have been able to increase my position size because my stop was still fine. So you kind of say to yourself, well, actually, you recognize that you're a bit early on the trade, but instead of kind of digging into it and saying, well, you know, how do I do it? All you do is literally say to yourself, well, actually, when I get the urge to take the trade or when I have the strategy firing off at me, what I need to do is just place my order 10 ticks under or 10 ticks above or split the order into two and play around with that because then you start to see, well, I'm always a bit early and history has shown, and again, proof, proof within the statements that if I just wait 10 more ticks, I can still take the trade and it's gonna be a better trade for me over time. So when you're actually in the heat of the moment in the market and you're trading, the currency is coming down, currency pairs coming down, is coming down, your oil's coming down, whatever, to your level is triggered, you're about to go long, stick a limit in, 10 ticks under or 20 ticks under, whatever that figure may be that it works out to and see how you get on with that for a while. If you say, you know what, my performance has increased, I've made 10 ticks more, I can increase my position size because my stop normally at 50 points can be at 40 because actually I'm 10 ticks lower than I would go in, if that makes sense. So I can increase my position size to suit, and make more money on the bottom end. Trading exactly the same stuff, exactly the same style, exactly the same strategy, trading exactly the same way, just making a very, very tiny adjustment to the trade to make more money in the long term. All right, guys, uh, let me know how you get on with that. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Thumbs up if you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so for more videos from me and other traders on this channel. Take care. I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.